Welcome everybody to the support show. This is the third iteration of this particular show. I'm Kevin Barnett, Director of Content here at Carbide 3D. This is our third one. Our fourth one will be on May 26th, so two weeks from now. We're doing these twice a month. We're trying to make that on the regular so you get about 24 episodes a year. We're going to have two prepared topics, questions after each topic, and then we'll open the floor for anything. Anything you want to know, if you want to join a webinar and you want to come and figure something out that's been vexing you, it's probably vexing someone else as well. So please feel free to come and ask those questions and make our show better. All right, with that, I'll introduce you to today's host. He's going to cover the initial setup and the first start of your machine. So the very beginning of joining the Shapeoko family, what you can expect, some best practices, hookups, differences in some of the machines. Fantastic guy. He came as a customer. I remember he walked in the door for his interview and said, hey, I watched all the videos. I know who you are. And now he's one of us. He finds himself on one of the videos. Oscar Ramos makes 3D reliefs. You've seen it on our Instagram. It's his work. He made our sign that's out front. He owns a laser now. This is a guy who's doing real work in addition to helping you get your machine running. An overall great dude. We're happy to have him hosting this event. Oscar, take it away. Topic number one is yours. Hi, Kevin. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. How are you? Yes, I'm happy to be here and be part of the uh, Carbide 3D family, finally. So I'm happy to be here. All right. So uh, for the webinar number three, it is for initial setup on first start. Um, that we have an important amount of uh, new customers asking for basic uh, setup on the machines. Uh, this webinar is oriented to all those new users getting confused about this configuration process. All right. So uh, the first question here is, uh, why do I need to set up my machine? OK, so all the machines comes with factory settings on the PCB boards. And uh, because of that, we need to specify what kind of machine we are trying to use. All right, so each machine um, has um, different set of parameters based on the type and the size. <clears throat> the type of the machine goes from the Shapeoko 3, Shapeoko 4, Shapeoko Pro, Shapeoko 5, and the Shapeoko HDM. The Shapeoko HDM has only one size, and it is pretty much a plug and play machine, almost a play, uh, plug and play machine. Uh, for the rest of the machines, um, the size are from standard, standard size, Excel, and XXL. For the Shipoko 5, it is based on footage. And it starts from 2x2, two 2x4, two, two and the 4x4 four four on the cutting area. All right, so the first thing to do is obviously connect the cutter when the machine is on. All right, so uh, do not initialize the machine, OK? So most people is just connected to the cutter and initialize the machine and complaining, ah, the machine is not working, OK? so. The first thing to do is go into settings, right? And in this pop-up window, we need to go to machine tab, right? And pay a special attention on travel dimensions area right here. So we need to click on load defaults and select the type of your machine, so right here. So I'll drop down this menu and select the type. In this case, I'm going to select Shapeoko Pro XXL, right? And click OK. The next step is very important because you're gonna select the C axis type, all right? So we have two options, C plus and HDC. The C plus is the one included with all the machines, uh, except for the shape Poco 5 that includes the HDC, okay? So uh, the HDC stands for heavy duty C axis, okay? So I'm gonna select that one it's for the bolt screw and uh, click okay, all right? So the next step, it is uh, same configuration data. Again, we need to select the kind of the machine. Just pay attention that you're selecting Shapeoko Pro HDC. Click OK. And wait for the progressive bar until it is done. All right, as soon as it's done, you can click OK down below. And you may have a BC black tab on the top, right? Just wait for it. And you should be good to go. You can initialize the machine now. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. Okay, so right here, this is a Shapeoko 5, but it is uh, the same process, okay? We set up uh, the, the machine for the Shapeoko Pro. This is a Shapeoko 5, but it is the same process, okay? So when you click on initialize the machine, the machine is gonna test the C limit switch right here. I'm going to home. The home position, it is the upper right corner of your machine. So the machine needs to go there. Remember, that is home, that is home position. 
and it's going to stay in there. And that's it. All right. So as soon as you do this, uh, you're good to go with the machine and uh, you have access to use the machine now. So now uh, the next step, you need to set up the bit setter. All right. So the bit setter for the Shepoku, uh, the Shepoku Pro and Shepoku 5, the bit setter is included. Uh, if you have the Shepoku 3 or Shepoku 4, you need to purchase this accessory separately. Okay. All right. So now um, we need to set up the bit setter now. Okay. So see, uh, when you initialize a machine, you have access to this screen. So you're ready to go. So now you need to go to the jog screen. It is a second option on the top menu right here. So you can have access to this screen. All right. So now you just need to go, need to, go to rapid position and click on Southeast to bring the router near to the bit setter. All right. So the machine is going to position, is going to be near the bit setter. You need to go back to the screen, click done right here to go back to the original uh, screen. And you need to uh, increase your speed. So by clicking increment plus until you have the word fast and position the bit right in the center of the bit setter, okay? Uh, it's not gonna be perfect, but I just try to do it uh, uh, as most as most as you can into the center. All right. So you need to press uh, X minus and X plus and, and Y minus accordingly in order to set this in position. And uh, when you have it that in position, you can go back to the settings screen. All right. So when you have access to setting the screen. Pay attention in this section right here, the, the, the one in the bottom, bit setter section. You need to enable enable the bit setter in this check mark right here, all right? And right after, click on use current location. Doing this, you're gonna have these numbers right here. These numbers represent the coordinates of the bit setter position, all right? So right after, you can click OK down below and initialize the machine one more time. And that's it, all right? So right next, I'm gonna show you the whole uh, homing process with the bit setter. Before to move on with this, um, I need to tell you this about the initial setup, okay? So people is asking about, hey, when do I need to do this? Do I need to do this every single time? The answer is no. It is a one-time deal only, okay? With your machine, with your brand new machine, you need to do this only one time, okay? So. If you replace, because this is going to be stored into your computer, your laptop, whatever you're using, all right? If you replace, for some reason, if you replace a computer, then you need to do this again, okay? The whole process that uh, we just run through, you need to do this again, all right? Just if you replace the computer. If not, it is only one single time deal, okay? All right, so right after, I'm gonna show you the complete homing cycle, the complete homing cycle with the bit setter. This is confusing. A lot of people is getting confused about this and is asking, hey, um, why my machine is uh, doing all this? Uh, can I avoid this uh, with the machine? No. So this process, the homing process, you need to perform this every single time that you turn on the machine. Every single time you turn on the machine, the machine is gonna do this, okay? So click on initialize, check on seal limit switch, going to home position, to check uh, the X and Y limit switches as well. If, if everything is in place and responding well, so then the machine is going all the way to the front and uh, ask you to install a bit, okay? To complete the cycle. Right after the homing cycle follows the bit setter probing cycle as well. This works together and it is part of the, the full homing cycle with the bit setter assembly, okay? So right here, you need to pay attention on the software. The software is going to redirect you about the how are and the when and when install bits or or uh, cancel things or go ahead with the next step. So right now, you have a pop-up window asking you to install a bit. So we already did. The spindle has a bit installed already. So you just you just need to click on resume. 
and the machine is going to do the rest. So it's going to measure the tool length. And remember, this again, this is a full homing cycle, full homing cycle with bit setter, and needs to be done every single time you turn on the machine, every single time. In this case, when, when the process is done, the spindle is just coming to the right, okay? For the Shapoko file, it's gonna stay right here. For the for the rest of the machines, it's into the middle of the gantry. This is the gantry, this one right here. It is called the gantry, all right? Okay, so um, most of the people is asking, I'm getting confused about, uh, my machine is not responding and uh, I have a blinking red LED light on the on the right. Okay, this is the board, blinking line, light, excuse me. This is okay, this is good to go, all right? So now, um, this is for my Shapeoko Pro controller board. And uh, as you can see right here, all the connections right here are from left to right. These four wires are for the motor extension cables. These three right here on the vertical position are for the limit switches. And the very important, this one right here, it is for the power or the front power button in the front of the machine for the Shipoko 4 and Pro. All right, so if you pay attention on these, uh, all these Molex connectors have has uh, little tabs right here. All these tabs should be pointing up, pointing up, as you can see, pointing up right here as well. Very important. I have seen um, several times uh, during the video chat with the customers, uh, the machine is moving randomly on, or not responding properly. And when I take a look into the controller, I just discover all these wires are plugged in the wrong orientation. So the tab is pointing to the left or to the bottom. So the voltage is not getting properly. And uh, obviously the motor is not responding well. The most important thing that you need to pay attention is on this one right here. This one right here is for the power, okay? So uh, I have seen this in the run orientation burning. This enclosure right here, the driver or something in this, and the controller board needs to be replaced, all right? So sometimes the controller resists and uh, you just uh, plug back in, back in place in the right orientation and you have a fully functional machine. Sometimes not, and we need to replace the controller. So just pay attention on this first time users before to do anything with your machine. Pay attention on this, pointing up. This one, pointing up. Also, another thing, the machine is not responding. Um, um, <clears throat> it's not, uh, not coming properly or something like that. When I take a look on this, I discover that there is a laser attachment on it, all right? So just to let you know, uh, we don't support laser attachment on this, okay? Yeah, there is a certain laser company that states that uh, the lasers are designed to be working on the, with our machine. So that is a lie. That is not true. Uh, the controller board is not designed to do that to support a laser or any any attachment on the controller. Okay. So this this controller has only one communication channel from here, and uh, when you install a laser attachment or some other um, attachment, uh, when you try to go back to the regular uh, usage of your machine, the machine is gonna be acting weird. And that is because it is only one channel, one communication channel, and it is competing on the communication in between the laser and the regular uh, communication with the Shipoko. So in order to uh, resolve this, you just need to set settings again, according to your machine, and uh, probably that's gonna fix the issue. Uh, Sometimes it is not, and uh, because of that, uh, we don't support that, and you're gonna be voiding the warranty if you install a laser attachment into your controller board. All right? Okay, so now, for the Shapeoko 5, this is the controller. This is the, differ the difference in between the Shapeoko 4 and Pro and the 5. This is the 5, bigger, heavier, and it's sealed. You don't have access to the internal components unless you open the unit from behind, void in the warranty as well, okay? So don't do that. And in this, the nice thing on this is that we have a dedicated Molex connector for every single part of the motors, switches, and accessories. It is uh, right here. 
So it is a dedicated different size for limit switches and everything in place. So there is no problem in here. The only problem here, and the most users are getting confused, is when they purchase the BFD with the Shipoku 5. Okay, so this is a power pendant for the Shipoku 5, and this is the cable. And as you can see, I have the cable as well for the BFD. Those has the same Molex connector. The only difference is that the power pendant has six wires on the Molex connector, and the BFD has three wires only. That is the difference, okay? Very important. The color, before these two wires were the same color, so now the BFD is black and the power pendant is uh, gray, okay? So most of the people are getting problems with this by misconnecting the BFD cable with this extension cord. Okay, this is an adapter, an adapter. If you, if you use this, you can fit the Molex connector into the power pendant, all right? And this is wrong. So your machine is not going to respond because you have only three pins, all right? So this one is the one that goes to the controller board. And it is right here, spindle with extension cord and plug and play like this, all right? Also, most of the people is getting confused about this, how this uh, works, okay? So my machine is not responding. I don't have any lights on the front or whatever. Okay, in order to turn on the machine, it is with this uh, panic button right here and uh, like this, turn it on off, on, off. This button right here is just to pass the cut, okay? If you are using your machine and for some reason you need to stop it, the machine during the cut, only during the cut, you can press this and the machine is going to stop. That is the only purpose of this button, okay? It's not related to power or, or, or something else. It's just to pass the cuts, okay? So the power is from here, Turn it to turn it on and press it to turn it off. On and off. Simple as that. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, and I think uh, that uh, covers pretty much uh, for the common cycle process. Okay, so um, for the next topic, it is the first cut or the first start into your machine. Uh, we have several options in here, uh, but for the first time users, uh, what I can recommend as a user, and uh, because I'm a user, and uh, based on my experience, uh, you can do something very simple using MDF. MDF is the most friendly material to be using to your uh, CNC. You can start to doing a simple square or a circle just to get familiarized with the fits and speeds and very important about the noises that are coming out from the machine. That is very, very important. It's gonna be loud, especially if you have uh, uh, the rubber instead of the spindle, it's gonna be loud. But if you experience something special, loud or something like that, just stop it. Just stop the machine. Remember from panic button, this one, or uh, this one on the, for and pro. You can do that and stop it. And also uh, I can recommend uh, to use uh, the Hello World test. You can do that one and you can have access to that going to my.carby3d.com and look for that, download it and run it into your machine. You just need a um, piece of paper and a Sharpie. The Sharpie is included with your machine and uh, just attach the Sharpie into the spindle and around uh, the program is gonna be the Shapoko logo. And uh, in that way, it's, it is a, a good idea about uh, how to, to have a general idea, general view uh, of uh, how your machine works, the sounds, the movement, and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, just to, to, to be aware what, what to expect. That is very, very important, that is key 
in order to be successful in your cuts. Uh, you can identify right away if uh, something is wrong with the machine, if uh, the cut is going well, if or if it is not. Yeah, you need to know your machine. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, just uh, take care of that. Just uh, go ahead. If you have any question, uh, we are here to help. Just uh, give us a call, technical support. We can perform the video chats and explain to you every single question that you may have. And uh, we just want you to be uh, confident with the machine. Uh, it, is, it could be uh, really hard at the beginning uh, for new users, but uh, I can tell you as a user, because that happens to me, you're gonna get it eventually. You just, uh, you're gonna be better every single day. And uh, when you just realize you're doing 3D reliefs, perfect. And you're gonna be happy with the results. All right, so yes, I think um, that is pretty much everything from the initial setup. Um, first, start with the machine. Uh, anybody has any question? Oscar, what did you go to for your very first project? What kinds of things were you making when you first started with your machine? Uh, I was looking on YouTube videos, a lot, a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, YouTube it is a really nice tool to learn pretty much everything. And uh, yeah, I start uh, as a, I'm not a woodworker, but uh, I, I do like to do things made by wood. Uh, so that's why I discovered the CNC world. And uh, I just start with uh, the Hello World. That helped me a lot just to know the machine. And uh, right after the tools, uh, I look for, I, I start with the Shipoko 3 uh, originally. And I just dig a little bit into the websites and, uh, and the YouTube channels and discover how to make clamps and uh, how to make that wasteboard with, uh, uh, in order to attach the clamps on, on place. That was my first project. And uh, yeah, right after just going uh, a little bit of further uh, until I feel confident enough to do wooden lace and then 3D release. But uh, yeah, pretty much uh, something, something very, very simple just to understand the machine. Our next support show will be on May 26th and we're doing these at 3 p.m. on Fridays. We want you to join in live. If you're watching this on YouTube, please come join us live, bring your questions. Bring your concerns. We'd love to help answer whatever it is that is giving you some trouble in your shop and make sure that you're making your best stuff with Shape Oco. Oscar, thanks for hosting. Thanks to everyone that was here. And we'll see you in two Fridays.